So hey everyone, welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. So this is gonna be a quicker video today. I got another email last night through my business website from a follower here. So hey, thanks for getting in touch. And as always, you're welcome to leave comments down below too so that everyone else can see them. So the question was a really basic one. Can I make good models with DJI's Mavic 2 Pro? Given the fact that there's some issues in getting your hands on a Phantom 4 Pro and that that seems to be the more preferred drone out there for doing mapping and modeling, some people are getting the idea that, oh, maybe the Mavic 2 Pro isn't up to the challenge. That's not the case, and I'm going to show you in just a moment. So welcome back, hope you enjoyed that little intro. So let's just get right into it. There are some differences between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro, absolutely. The biggest issue, the issue that people are talking about is the fact that the Phantom 4 Pro has a mechanical shutter. And in the case of the Mavic 2 Pro, we don't have a mechanical shutter, it's, it's electronic. So there's possibilities of more motion blur in the images that you're using to create your models. Does that mean that, you know, throw it out the window, get rid of the Mavic 2 Pro, and just wish that you could get your hands on a uh, Phantom 4 Pro? No, not at all. So there's a lot that goes into the modeling. It's not just the drone that you're flying. It's how fast you're flying the location that you're working on. It's how much motion blur is going into those images. The faster you fly the drone and pop off those little snapshots, uh, the more possibility is that you're gonna have some blur in the images. The image alignment's not gonna work out well, and if the image alignment's not gonna work out well, then our model doesn't work out well. Fortunately, we have control of our drones and of the software that we're using, so you can slow your pace down when you're flying a model location. And so when you're building your, uh, your model flight paths in whatever capture software that you're using, um, there are opportunities to actually slow things down or to have it take more frequent images or maybe less frequent images. So our side lap and front overlap of our images, um, they, they need to mesh together well. And if we've got that blur introduced there, then we're setting ourselves up for a bad time. But let's take a look at some sample models just to show you, yeah, you can make a decent model with the Mavic 2 Pro. You just have to keep your limitations in mind when you're setting up. So we're just looking over here at the, the continuing saga of the Granville build out. And you can see right here that um, this is a pretty nice looking ortho mosaic model. We're zoomed out on it a bit. Uh, I believe this is 20 something acres. And as I'm zooming in, we can really see a lot of detail in here. So I was flying the drone a little slower and um, you know, you don't want to set the drone to 25 miles an hour and tell it to pop a shot every two seconds. I can guarantee you're going to have a mess. So capture applications like map pilot for maps made easy, like ground station pro, like PIX 4 ds capture, like drone deploys capture. They can, you can adjust, your overlaps, you can adjust in some cases your flight speed, some cases the program, the software actually does those adjustments for you and that's perfectly fine. But as we look through this, do we feel like we've got good detail that, that we're not having any blur in this, that we can actually see all of our features? I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, this is looking pretty good. We zoom down here, we can actually see my helipad right in here. And this was flown at 150 feet above ground level. Now I'm zooming way down and this is not the clearest thing in the world, my helipad. But at this moment, look over here, um, this length would be 1.68 meters. So as we come down even further, uh, we're starting to get you know, it, a little too pixelated here looking at the 3D model. Overall though, 
does this model come out nice? Is this a usable model? Well, that depends on your application. Are you handing this off to a construction company? Are you handing this off to the earth moving company that is leveling this area and creating drainage areas? Um, you know, it's all going to depend on the final application of the data that you've collected. Remember, this isn't just images, this is data. I'm gonna jump up here to the dense cloud really quick and Oh, take a look at that. Somebody messed up, and that somebody would be me. So I actually had this. We had the transform region. I'm going to reset the region here because I was actually moving the region around before to edit and crop some things. So whoops, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the 3D model, and I'm going to go back to our arrow button, and now we're not resetting the region, we're actually rotating around the region. So to me, this model is looking pretty decent, and this was flown with the Mavic 2 Pro. This particular map slash model area took under 20 minutes to fly at 150 feet above ground level. Now, if I had a customer come to me and say that they needed some really accurate results, number one, would I like to have the Phantom 4 Pro? Absolutely. Number two, can I do it with the Mavic? Yes, I can. That's going to take me um, pre-planning my mission a little better, making sure that the uh, ground sampling distance, uh, that I can get that as small as possible, and that uh, the drone is not blasting along. And one of the nice things while you're flying, let's say with uh, Map Pilot, for instance, you can actually take a look at the camera and see how the cameras are doing. But as you're seeing in the video on screen as well, beyond the maps, um, you're actually seeing some of the photos being taken, each a couple of seconds apart, and you can see that they're very clear that we don't have motion blur going on. So we're doing okay for the images that we're building the model with. We want to get as accurate as possible, but if you're just starting out in this, you don't need to run out and buy the Phantom 4 Pro RTK model. You can use your smaller drones to do this work. And so big factors in this are going to be battery life for doing this work. You know, like on a Spark, the battery life is not as good as on the Mavic 2 Pro or as good as the Phantom 4 Pro. So short answer, absolutely. You can build good maps and models with the Mavic 2 Pro. You can build good maps and models with the Mavic 1 Pro. I've got that one as well, and I've used that for multiple missions that I've flown over the years. So don't get discouraged when you hear, well, the Mavic 2 Pro isn't as good because blank. Yes, we don't have the mechanical shutter, but we can work around that. And as you get better with your mapping and modeling, you're gonna find out absolutely you can work, provide workable models, not only workable models, but really nice models. One of the big things that I've really been pushing lately are the ortho mosaics that I've got up on screen. Uh, doing these ortho mosaics as overlays to Google Earth, I have found that these are in fact very accurate. They line up with Google Earth very well and um, they can fill in those holes and gaps where Google Earth doesn't have a project up yet. So all right, there's your short answer. Can you do it with a Mavic 2 Pro? Absolutely. Don't be discouraged. The best thing to do is get out there and try modeling on your own. Get your practice in and see what works for you. It's not just your drone. Don't forget your capture applications and your modeling applications play a big role in the final product that you're providing to your clients. All right, everyone, have an awesome weekend, and we'll see you next week.